Hello again and happy birthday to Ruby the Elite. We're going to give her a makeover for her birthday. 40 years old this year. She is the oldest scooter I have. And she's beautiful. Wait till you see how great she looks underneath her panels. 61% on the battery. You know, this is the battery I installed years ago. And I've kept it on a charger and kept it going, but I think it's time to put a new one in. But now I'm going to show you why she's on the lift to begin with. You know, I haven't really rode this bike much. I keep on buying more and more scooters. And when you do, you neglect. And this is what happens. Take a look, though, at the pop-up headlight. That's the coolest feature she has. And it was first for Honda on the 1984 Honda Elite 125. A lot of folks think she is a, she's a Deluxe. She's not a 150 Deluxe. She's rare. Not as many of these around, that's for sure. Not in the shape she's in. But listen to the way she runs. Very high idle. Very common to have the problem that she's having. If I was to give it any throttle right now, the bike would just stall. So we're going to take her panels off, we're going to give her a nice thorough cleaning and get her the makeover she deserves. And you know, I wasn't planning on doing this next, but you know what, since it's her 40th birthday, it's, it's just right that we do it. The channel's about her and she deserves to be running and, and I feel bad that I've left her in this kind of shape. but. Overall, she's garage kept. Trust me, she doesn't never sit outside. And I try to start her every once in a while, but in this case, I guess I just didn't start her as often as I needed to. But we'll go through, we'll do all the usual things and get her running pretty, and then we'll get her inspected and ride her around in the neighborhood. I bought a new camera, I've mentioned this before, and I'm going to start the camera with her. It's going to be fun. I bought a 360 camera and I'll show you some cool views of her riding around with my big butt on her seat. It should be a lot of fun. But we're going to go ahead and get started. And you know what? There you go. And we'd have to start her up again, which we could try. It's not going to... It eventually would start back up, but to be honest, it, it wouldn't go more than a second or two. So let's get started on her makeover. All right, we're gonna first get started by taking off the seat. There is a couple of nuts that hold it on along with our helmet brackets. And we're gonna take the centerpiece off as well. There's a couple bolts on the top. And underneath the carpet, there's also a couple of bolts we'll have to remove the two side panels and a panel in the back but we'll go ahead and I'll show you right here there is one screw and these panels come off very similar to the Elite 250 you have this back piece two screws underneath here and once you remove these it will allow you to take the two individual side panels off. You have to unplug your turn signals and remove that one screw which I already had and the side panel will come off very simply. Now something I noticed right away is I used the same fuel line on the Elite 250 and it did not last. It did on this bike but it's coming off. I've got something better that I could use instead. But like I mentioned, underneath the carpet, there's a couple of bolts. And we'll move on to this side. Take this screw off along with the one right here. And that way, we'll have her panels out of the way. So you can see underneath how nice she is. Again, we have the two plugs for our signals. And with a little pulling, it takes a little bit it will come right off. Now we can finish taking off that centerpiece, move the carpet out of our way, 
And there you go. Now we've got access to our carb, the air box, everything under here we need to take off, starting with the air box. We have three bolts in the back, and there's also a line that goes between our air box and our transmission. And there's a three. I actually took that one off already. And once we remove these, we'll be able to get to the carburetor, but this has got to come off first. And while we have that off, we'll check it, make sure it's still okay, check all the connections. And we have a band in the front here that we have to remove. And once we loosen it, we'll be able to take the entire air box right off. You just got to turn it a little bit. Actually, we've got one more line right here that we have to remove. And the whole thing, I see a little bit of leaking on my, a little bit of leak in there on my spark plug. That ain't good. We need to loosen our screw that holds the band around our intake. And now we need to loosen the nut for our throttle. And also in the back, it winds around back here. Very similar to the other bikes. There's actually two of these on the Elite 250. Only one on this bike. And once we remove that we can get the throttle cable completely off after the throttle cable we've got our auto buy starter that we've got to unplug the yellow and the green cable for and then disconnecting our fuel and our vacuum line and there you go we're going to need to take this all apart under the flow pool there that's where we're going to find i'm sure the clogged up area that we have to uh, take care of. But we're going to take the whole thing apart and clean it all up. And after we clean it all up, we'll blow some air through it just to make sure everything is perfect. Starting with these screws here on the float bowl. And I don't expect anything to be real gummed up here now. It's just these jets that always get clogged. But since we're already taking these out, we're going to take everything else out too, like I said, and clean the whole thing out. Here's a second one, and it's real important to use a right size screwdriver. These are brass and they will strip easily. And you can see one of the holes is actually clogged up. So we're going to use our carb cleaner, go through each one of the jets, all the little holes, and then we'll, we'll, we'll continue to tear down our carburetor as well. We might as well clean it all out. So we'll start by removing the float and then taking everything else off of it. The diaphragm, the auto buy starter, anything that doesn't need to be on it. And then that way we can go through and spray our carb cleaner through each one of the holes and then use also our air to go through it. Dry it all up. Make sure there isn't anything left in there. And then when we put it on the bike, it'll run like brand spanking new again. This is not hard to do. It's very simple. You know, a lot of folks will try to put Berrimans through and see if that'll help get the bike to run better. But you know what? This does not take that long to take out. And any of the Honda scooters I've had, it takes very little time to do what I'm about to do. And let's just give it a good cleaning. Now I noticed I'm taking off the fuel lines because that's the line that failed on the Elite 250. I got this much nicer fuel line I'm installing instead. Mm -hmm. I didn't have another one of the fuel filters, so I had to use something else. But I figure, you know, every year I'll just put a new one on. We'll see approximately how long it needs to be and cut it to size. And it's real important to put one of these on. Any little junk that's in there, it's going to clean it all out and not allow it to go any further than this point. And that little hanger goes around it real nice, almost like the OEM one. Of 
Of course, I would have preferred the Honda Perp, but I couldn't find one. Everywhere I looked, it was out of stock. So this is what we're going to use. I'm just going to push this all the way through the front, make sure I have it long enough. And now we'll go ahead and also replace our vacuum line just to make it a, light, a little bit longer than what it was. Make it easier to unplug it and plug it in to the carburetor. And then I'll cut this to size as well. And we'll go ahead and push it all the way through and then see approximately how long we need. And then we'll cut it to size. Giving ourselves a little bit of excess for our vacuum line and also for our fuel line just to make it easier to get on and off from the carburetor. It was a little too tight before. This should make it much easier for us. Not extra long, just a little bit longer, that's all. And we have it installed. And this particular fuel line is much better than what I had in the bike. Hopefully will last for many years. I guess we'll find out though, won't we? Now we're going to start cleaning it up to replace the spark plug. And pulling out my trusty service manual, you can see the DPR7EA is the plug that we're going to install and the gap is 0 0.032 to 0 0.035. This is the NGK plug that is recommended. Of course I only put in what is recommended. Now as far as the gapping of it, the easiest way I found to do it, you can use feeler gauges but I like my gapping tool instead. All you got to do is very lightly put the tool around the plug and as you can see it's between the two points that is recommended. You just slide it along that edge until it's nice and snug and if you need to you barely, barely, I'm saying lift it a little bit and you'll gap it perfectly every time. Now we'll go ahead and install it. And you don't have to over tighten it. It looked like the plug leaked a little last time. I'm not sure that that iridium plug made a good seal. So I went back to this instead using my spark plug tool, which is very simple to use. Then using a screwdriver, go right through the hole until you turn it and lightly tighten the plug. It is that simple. Now we'll give our air box a thorough cleaning since it's off the bike. It's the perfect time to make it shine. We're also going to open it up. There's four screws that hold it together just to inspect our air filter. I don't, in, I don't think it's going to have anything wrong with it. It hasn't been in there, but maybe a thousand miles or so. So I expect it to be slightly dirty, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be replaced yet. It still has definitely some life left in it, but it's doing its job because you can see there is some dirt in it, but we'll put it back in for now. We'll probably replace it next year. And as you can see, there's no other debris or anything in there. It looks good. So we'll put the screws back on, make sure all the fittings and everything look okay, and put it back onto the bike. Now we'll go ahead and slide our carburetor into the intake, but we don't want to tighten that band up until we have everything else attached. That way we know everything is lined up. I've mentioned that in previous videos. So we're going to go ahead and put in our throttle cable first in the back so that we can have it wind around to the front. If you try to do it the other way, you're going to be wasting your time. Always start with the back, tighten up the bolts. Now we'll just make sure. As you can see that it's working fine. We've cleaned up this whole area back here. We'll go ahead and put the air box back on and we're going to disconnect this line right here into our EVAP just to make it easier to plug it into the air box. Once we slide the air box in again coming in from an angle it gives you an extra inch or two to be able to plug that back in and get your hand in there and then you just go back to the other side and reconnect it.
Once we get that done, we'll go ahead and reconnect it to the front of our curb. It'll slide right on, then we'll just tighten the band up, and this will be in place. We have our piece here that goes in from our air box into our transmission we'll connect. Then we'll put the three bolts in, just as we just did. I went ahead and replaced the black electrical tape that went around the windings for my temporary tack that goes to the front with this wire. And now I am just screwing in the band that goes around the intake, getting it nice and tight now that everything else is buttoned up. We'll just go ahead and put our coil back under here and put it back onto our spark plug. Now we're going to take the muffler off. We're on the other side of the bike now, taking these three bolts off, which I've already done. Sorry, got a little ahead of myself. And then you have two as well that hold the joint on right there. We'll remove both those and then the muffler will come right off. And there was a little bit of a leak too under here, but I'll show you that in a moment. Let's continue on by taking off the tire. So we've got our two bolts that go in to hold this in place so that we can remove the shock as well as the main nut that holds the wheel on. And when you remove these, make sure you keep track of what you're removing and in the direction that you're removing them from. Now we'll go ahead and remove the shock. And once we have the shock out of the way, then we can go ahead and remove the rim. Another collar comes out right here making sure to keep track of the direction and remove our rim and look at the grease and nastiness under here we're going to clean all this up clean our brake up brake doesn't look to be in too bad a shape i replaced that not even a thousand miles ago so but we're going to clean all this nasty grease and dirt and crap out of here just go over the brake real quick and Use some brake clean on it just to make sure that it's all clean of any dust or any nastiness. Brake clean is such a great product for cleaning out any kind of old grease or anything. It just cleans it up and then it dries extremely fast. Awesome product. And using my Simply Green Purple HD, got rid of all the nastiness out. From inside here almost looks new let's pull out the rest I had it halfway out the exhaust gasket and yeah this needs to be replaced I did not replace this when I first bought the bike but you can see it's kind of oblong it's not a circular type pattern anymore it's kind of bent so I ordered a replacement I knew I was gonna have to replace it and I try to order stuff ahead of time, so by the time I get to these things, I'm not waiting on parts. So, I mean, I'm not perfect on that, but that was one thing I did order ahead of time. But as you can see, she looks beautiful in here, and I think this is where we're going to end part one. We got quite a bit accomplished, and there's going to be at least three or four more parts when it comes to the scooter. But we accomplished quite a bit, and her birthday makeover is what we will continue here's some other videos i'll see you next time